Welcome to Down the Warp Pipe. Mario 3D Worlds takes the course-based structure traditionally found in 2D Mario games and extrapolates it to a third dimension. The inclusion of simultaneous co-op means that you can play it either alone or with up to three friends in couch co-op or online. It has an overworld for you to explore and find secrets within on top of the levels you normally play through. So let's talk about the good, the bad, and the player that Mario 3D Worlds was designed for so you can decide whether it should be bumped up, bumped down, or added to the list of games on your backlog. In case you're new, I'm Ty. But if not, Great to see you again. For me, I originally beat Mario 3D Worlds on the Wii U with my buddy Justin back when it originally released. However, on the Switch, it was a great opportunity not only to get the Bowser's Fury DLC, which I'll talk about in a completely separate video, but also so that I could play through it with my wife, and I thought it would be a great way of getting her used to the idea of controlling a character in a 3D environment. It's a perfect template for translating the 2D goodness of stuff like Mario World or Mario Brothers 3 into 3D, meaning the tight controls and fun, well-designed levels translate from those 2D games to this 3D one. Personally, in the new Super Mario Bros. games, I feel like the simultaneous co-op hurts the experience, but in Mario 3D Worlds, I think it actually is a great beneficial experience as playing through solo and playing through co-op are actually two varied experiences that are quite different. The game is not difficult, which is great if you're looking for something to play with someone who's not a gamer or maybe a kid. However, the difficulty does spike as you get into the later levels, so if you are looking for a traditional Mario style challenge like I am, then that's where you're going to get your fill. Just keep in mind you need to collect every single stamp hit the top of every single flagpole, and collect every single star along the way in order to unlock those most challenging of levels. The few powers that return from previous Mario games are really well executed in a third dimension here. The addition of things like the boomerang attack, which is an interesting almost fireball move where it comes back to you, is really cool, but the kicker is that really super cute cat outfit. I really enjoyed the variety of different locales that you get to experience and go through. They're both inventive, imaginative, and also just kind of hit those specific tropes that I love to see in a platformer. There's also a lot of quality of life improvements here, like your stars not resetting when you die, as well as the fact that you move faster than you did in the original Wii U version, meaning that it's easier to beat levels within the allotted time limit. The selection of characters are varied not just in the appearance, but also in how they control, almost as if they were ripped right out of Mario Bros. 2. To that effect, the best thing about Mario 3D Worlds is it feels like the culmination of every game that came before it, and that means there's going to be nostalgia for anyone who's played pretty much any other Mario game before. All the good doesn't mean that a few things couldn't be a little bit better. The levels do get a fair bit more difficult as you get into those special levels that I previously mentioned. Ideally, the person that's been playing along with you from the beginning, if they're not traditionally good at Mario games, should be getting better as they go through the regular core of the experience. But those special levels are really going to test their platforming skills, and if you're traditionally a lot better at Mario games, that might mean that your patience gets tested as you move on. For me, I didn't find it an issue at all, as my wife got significantly better as she went through the experience, but your mileage may vary, especially if you're playing with someone that's a lot younger. 100%ing the game, as well as every level in it, requires a little bit more than I think is really necessary, especially when you consider the fact that completing every level with the same character means that you only get a single stamp as a collectible unlock. This meant more on the Wii U version when you could post things to the Miiverse, but on the Switch, this is just a basically meaningless stamp of approval. I understand it's basically the same thing as getting a Platinum Trophy, it just feels way less satisfying, especially if you want to 100% the game, meaning that you have to get through every single level with every single character, and if you're playing it by yourself, that means you have to beat every level five times. That's just way too many times for what you get unlocked. The very last level Champions Road borders on insanity for how difficult it is. It has a really massive difficulty spike compared to the previous world, 
which is already a really high bar in terms of difficulty for a Mario game. I feel like Champions Road would have been better served being broken up into smaller levels, maybe three of them, and have each of those be a specific kind of test that you would need to get through, rather than something that's a Mario Marathon. That one is a tongue twister. Try to say it three times fast. Mario Marathon, Mario Marathon, Mario Marathon. Okay, maybe it's not that hard. Let's talk about three games that if you've played them, this might be something you would actually really enjoy, and I'll let you know why you might enjoy it. Mario 3D World feels like what Nintendo would do if they made a traditional Crash Bandicoot game. These are games that really fit the mold of a 2D platformer moved into 3D, and that's not a bad thing. So if you enjoyed the Crash Insane trilogy, or the originals on the PS1, then this is a game that you actually will get a really fun time out of. Next up is gonna be Shovel Knight and its applicable DLC expansions. If you've played any of those games, Mario 3D Worlds is a game that you actually still really might enjoy. Although they're a little bit different and Shovel Knight leans more on a heavy influence from something like Mega Man, that doesn't mean that Mario isn't far behind, as the traversal needed to get through levels in Shovel Knight will actually be very similar to the different types of traversal you can and will need to do in order to get through levels in Mario 3D Worlds. The pacing is definitely going to be a little bit slower than what you might expect, but that speed boost from the original Wii U version means that if you're playing it on the Switch, it's going to be a little bit more in tune with something that you might enjoy, like Shovel Knight. This last one here is going to be a bit of an oddball, Doom Eternal. Yeah, you might have not seen that one coming. Doom Eternal, similar to Mario 3D World, has a rhythmic nature to its gameplay. With Doom Eternal, it's slaying demons and jumping around a level as you try to avoid damage. In Mario 3D World, it's jumping on a Goomba and jumping around a level to avoid damage. So, although they're very different and one is a mature rated game and one is a E for everyone rated game, they actually share a lot more in common than you might think, at least when it comes to gameplay. If you're a fan of Doom Eternal, I highly urge you, if you have access to a Nintendo Wii U or Switch, pick up Mario 3D World and give it a go. You may actually find that, especially once you get to those more difficult later levels, you're really hitting a specific stride and getting a similar sense of satisfaction as slaying demons. What about yourself? After hearing all this, is Mario 3D Worlds bumped up, bumped down, or added to your backlog? And if you've played it before, let me know down below in the comments what games you would recommend people actually check out if they really enjoyed Mario 3D Worlds. As always, thank you so much for joining me down the warp pipe.